Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I am thrilled to share with you one of the books that I've been most forward to reading this year. It is Sex and Lies by Leila Slimani. Now you may know Leila Slimani's name as a novelist. In particular, I think her book Lullaby was published last year, a French Moroccan writer. It was um, translated into English last year about a murderous nanny. I think I did re recommend it in one of my newsletters. Uh, but I didn't get to read this, but read Nan, uh, read Lullaby. But I have been desperate to read Sex and Lies, which is a piece of journalism rather than a novel. Sadly, it's only thin. I wish it could have been three times longer because I was absolutely fascinated by this. Leila wanted to spend time in Morocco talking to young Moroccan girls and Moroccan women and older Moroccan women and even the occasional man about what it's like to be a woman, a sexual woman in Morocco, how to, how society shames those feelings, forbids activity and how concerns around um, public decency have been used to trap women and not men, how it is women that feel the full force of the penal penalization of sexualization, sexual activity out of marriage, term, pregnancy, termination, pregnancy control, etc. What is what I found really interesting is I have traveled to Morocco and it's very interesting because uh, Morocco has, of course, this famous bohemian reput reputation since sort of after the post-war is this place to go for uh, sexual freedom and uh, exploration. It's seen as a very sexual place, uh, whether it's the era of Yves Saint Laurent, whether it's the era of, you know, the walled gardens and the parties in the 1960s, etc. It's seen as a very liberated uh, or even debauch, I think Tangier really had a reputation uh, around that uh, debauchery and it's where the stones would go and where novelists would go to take drugs and have sex. So it's very interesting to see that, con that reputation contrasted with an incredibly um, strict and uh, punishing uh, legislative framework and societal framework uh, that really shames sex and forbids it, but of course how this particularly explicitly ends up censoring female activity rather than men. Now this account, like I said, is journalistic. So I think behind me you can see Lisa Tadeo's Three Women, which was an amazing book last year that focused on the three lives of women in the United States in a kind of um, shaped, novelized way that looked at particular experiences in these three women's lives. That's not, don't, wouldn't confuse that with the shape of this. So in this book, Layla interviews and meets with a dozen or more uh, women from Morocco, whether they are partic particularly activists, whether they've been particularly on the receiving end of discriminatory um, uh, censorship, whether they've been arrested by the police, or if they're just young women growing up confused and uh, concerned about what the society's approach to sex and to women means for their future. This is a hugely surprising read. Obviously for a feminist like me, it is incredibly frustrating and um, educational and informative and humbling and uh, revealing yet again of all the privilege that I have as a white woman growing up in the UK. But it is um, painful because you can see the shape of misogyny and a patriarchal society. Um, of course, the shadows are there in all of our societies, but how it remains so punishing to women in Morocco is, of course, um, an essential read, especially as Morocco is still seen as one of those um, Islamic cultures that is more forward thinking uh, around women than say perhaps somewhere like Saudi Arabia and how this can really forces us to uh, think about agency and solidarity. Um, that's lots of big words there, isn't there? I mean, that's a lot of big words, but I tell you, I flew through this. This is wonderful. So Layla talks about women who come up to her and whisper to her in bars, in hotel bars. She talks to women who are so excited um, about being um, uh, sort of educated with opportunity and refusing to settle or to settle with a man that is abusive to them, uh, who've married a couple of times, who are trying to live shameless lives and how that has impacted their relationships with family and friends. She talks about some very specific legal codes um, that have 
caused immense problems for women in society, even refers to how Jennifer Lopez, a performance by Jennifer Lopez, got caught on it caught up in such a code because it was so seen as sexually explicit. She talks about how the imams and Muslim scholars still have sway over how the public responds to uh, female activity, even if it isn't, even if there's a gap in legislation or the legislation is silent or equal about how its treatment is applied to both men and women, how it is, of course, always applied he more heavily to women rather than men. And very interesting sections on uh, lesbianism and women-women relationships, uh, because that is an area of great taboo, as you can imagine, uh, too. So genuinely fascinating, but also full of really fascinating and fascinating, again, twice, lots of difficult facts as well that I was still blind to. And I'm actually going to stop waffling and read directly from Layla's book on one of the early chapters in the book where she starts talking about, she's trying to give the reader a picture of what life is actually like in Morocco for women. Okay. I learned that I could not be homosexual, have an abortion or cohabit. Being unable to have an abortion, if I were to have a child without being married, I could face criminal charges and my child would have no legal status. They would be a bastard. The new family code of 2004 allows a child born outside marriage to be registered. But if the father will not acknowledge it, the mother must choose the child's name from a list. All in, all including the prefix abd, meaning servant, slave, or subordinate. Born of an unknown father, the child will be a societal outcast and subject to social and economic exclusion. To avoid this exclusion and not risk arrest for an extramarital relationship, hundreds of women abandon children born outside wedlock. According to the Moroccan charity INSAF, in 2010 alone, 24 babies on average were abandoned every day, which adds up to almost 9,000 babies per year without identity or family, not to mention the corpses found in public bins. In short, there's no salvation for the unmarried. This is one of the most revealing and important texts, I think, as we talk about allowing other voices other than white feminists to speak out, allowing, giving people agency to talk about their own experiences, to hear other, to give voice to people who are usually voiceless, both by white feminists, not literally white feminists, but you know the term white feminists, um, but also by the patriarchal structure and I that's why I found this so revealing because I was humbled by my own lack of knowledge and um, now hugely desperate to see things th more through other people's eyes. I absolutely adored this, Sex and Lies, Leila Slimani. Do read it, it's fascinating. Thank you.